On today's show, Waymo is testing autonomous semi-trucks in Atlanta, Ford is bringing back a special version of the Mustang, and Acades shares how it improved the opposed piston engine. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Earlier this year, Waymo ordered thousands of Chrysler Pacific hybrids to use for its driverless ride-hailing service that will kick off in Phoenix, Arizona this year. But the company isn't just using the technology to move passengers around. Waymo will start testing autonomous semi-trucks in Atlanta this week, which will carry freight to Google's data centers in the area. There will be human riders in the trucks to take over if needed. This is an area that's starting to see a lot of activity. Last week, Uber also announced plans to test autonomous semi-trucks in Arizona. And it's a good application for the technology because it will eventually allow cargo to be moved faster and safer across the country. The supplier company Continental is beefing up production of its 48-volt mild hybrid system. The company just formed a joint venture with Sichuan Chengfei Integration Technology to build the systems in China starting later this year. The new company, which Continental will own 60% of, will supply the systems globally. Continental says its 48-volt mild hybrid system improves fuel economy in gasoline engines up to 21% and 9% in diesels. Renault and Audi started using the hybrid system last year. It's also the supplier for the V6 version on the new Ram pickup. And by 2025, Continental expects 48-volt hybrids to be equipped in 14% of new vehicles worldwide. And while speaking of China, GM, along with its joint venture partners SAIC and Wuling, just introduced a new compact crossover in the country. Called the Baozhong 530, it's available in eight variants with a choice of a 1.8 liter or 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, which can be mated to a six-speed manual or a dual clutch transmission. It starts at about 12 grand and runs up to $18,000. We'll be back with some Ford performance announcements right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Well, unless you've been living in a doomsday bunker, you've probably heard that Ford is bringing back the bullet Mustang, and soon another iconic pony car will join the ranks, the California Special. First offered as a production car in 1968, today the GTCS features a blacked out grille, front splitter, trademark fading stripe that runs from the 5.0 side badge to the rear fender scoop, unique five spoke wheels, and California Special badging on the trunk, as well as throughout the interior. Also joining the lineup for 2019 is rev matching on 5-liter V8 models with a manual trans, a 12-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system, and active exhaust for 4-cylinder EcoBoost models. The 2019 Mustang will be on sale this summer. And speaking of Ford Performance models, its European division is releasing more information about the new Fiesta ST. Under the hood will be a turbocharged 1.5-liter 3-cylinder engine that produces nearly 200 horsepower. It also features cylinder deactivation, that's very interesting for a three-cylinder, and also active exhaust technology. To improve cornering, an optional mechanical limited slip differential is available, while force vectoring springs, as Ford calls them, are standard. These are non-uniform, non-interchangeable, directionally wound springs that are used to improve lateral stiffness. The new Fiesta ST Hot Hatch goes on sale in Europe this spring. Coming up next, Acades explains why its opposed piston engine is better than versions that came before it. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. You may have seen them at top-notch trade shows around the country or sat on them in a friend's car. 
Catskin, the premier manufacturer of custom leather interiors, has teamed up with AutoLine to give away a free brand new interior for your vehicle. Go to our website, autoline.tv to enter. Good luck. The opposed piston engine was first created decades ago, but it never really caught on. However, Acades Power, a company that's developing opposed piston engines, says it's come up with a breakthrough. It says a Ford F-150 with its engine can get a whopping 37 mpg combined. On AutoLine After Hours, we're joined by David Johnson, the president and CEO of the company, and he shared what makes their opposed piston engine different from early versions. I would say there's, there's two key factors. Uh, first of all, the engines that Fairbanks Morris had in the 30s and the engines that uh, the Roots Lister TS3 and the Napier Deltic and the Yonkers Yuma, all these historic opposed piston engines, none of them met emissions, right? And, and, and they weren't, I would say, of modern standards, right? So in terms of durability, reliability, quietness, all these things that we expect engines to do today, they didn't do. So that's actually what we've been working on at Katie's Power, is taking these historic engines that had benefits for fuel efficiency and emission, excuse me, fuel efficiency and power density and making them meet emissions and delivering even more fuel efficiency and, and, and lower emissions. And the reason we're able to do that is we're actually taking all the technologies that have been developed for four-stroke engines, modern turbocharging, modern common rail, high-pressure fuel injection, closed-loop combustion control and feedback algorithms and engine control units that weren't available, all that technology that's been developed on four-stroke engines and applying it to the opposed piston two-stroke engines. It was a packaging boon compared to that Comer too, which I think had rockers and a single cam crankshaft underneath, and it was a gigantic, crazy package. Yeah, someone called it a folded crank, which sounds like a really bad idea, yeah. and is, yeah. Yeah, so we actually, so one of the things we did when we started the company is we looked at lots of different architectures, and the architecture that we settled on, the ones in this truck, is, I would say, a traditional, we call it a Junkers Jumo, so the German style, with two crankshafts and two pistons, and uh, I saw you had Don Runkel on here. It's not like that at all, so we don't have two cylinders. He was very cylinders. complimentary of you guys. Yeah, no, we get along great, and uh, he's a great guy, uh, but we don't have that architecture, and I would say that architecture, I think Don mentioned it, was, you know, Know, really problematic for 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 uh, eco motors. Yeah. Uh, we have a very standard architecture with a ton of innovation, modernization on top of it, and so that was really the thing. And then and then Gary, I would say the other thing is, you know, today to be relevant in the marketplace, you got to meet emissions and the most stringent standards. So tier three, lev three, really low levels, and you know, real world emissions are coming. We've got an advantage for that too. And then you've got to have something that you can offer because just meeting emissions is is not a product. It's not something the customer wants to buy. It's a requirement, right? So that's the price of entry, but then you've got to have something that the market wants, and what the market wants right now more than anything else, at least from a regulatory standpoint, and depending on where you are in the world, from a customer standpoint is fuel efficiency, and that's what we offer in spades, so big gains in fuel efficiency. And for a deeper dive into Acadie's opposed piston engine, you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.